The Sony a7S III is gonna be the most popular full frame camera for many years to come. And if you wanna do professional filmmaking and videography with it, you gotta rig it out. So that's why I built this beautiful cinema rig. And I'm gonna show you how you can do it all with your own camera. So let's get into it. The first thing that any rig needs is a cage to build everything off of. I'm using this one from Small Rig. You could use one from any company like Tilta, but I prefer Small Rig because they're the most affordable and they have the most parts in their ecosystem. So let's get this thing on. The next thing we're gonna add is a 15 millimeter base plate. And I'm gonna use two screws, a quarter 20 and a three eighths thread to keep the camera from rotating on top of it. And there are threads matching that on the bottom of the cage. Now we're gonna add a standard Manfrotto quick release plate to the bottom of this so it can quickly slide it on and off of a tripod. Next, we're gonna add a 15 millimeter hinge also from Small Rig, that's really gonna be the building blocks of the power solution for this camera and the accessories. So we'll slide that right into the back of this 15 millimeter base. On the back of this hinge, we're gonna add a V-mount lock. And we're actually going to mount it upside down. So instead of it making this little V going down, we're gonna have the V point up. And I'll show you in a little bit why we're mounting this upside down. So it just screws into the quarter 20 threads right here on the back. Now let's add a V-mount battery to this setup. And in my last Sony A7S rig build out, I used this big battery from DNO. It's still a really great battery and of course is a great power solution, but it's just a little bit big and bulky for a small camera like this. So I've decided for this rig to go with a much smaller V-mount battery that's still 99 watt hours. And this one's from Yin Chem. I've already done a full review of it. Now we are going to be mounting this upside down like I was showing earlier. And then I can just hinge this against the back of the eyepiece right here. In my last A7S build out, I also used this Foca V-mount base plate. And it's still a really great solution. But again, I wanted something a little bit more minimal, smaller, and lighter. Now let's grab the cables to actually get this thing powered on. So what I'm using here is the new Sony Z battery. And this is actually just a dummy battery that goes to a D-tap connection. Now I know a lot of people are afraid to use dummy batteries and third-party power solutions for their cameras because they're scared of frying their cameras. And this is a very expensive camera. So I understand that fear. But I've been using dummy batteries and third-party batteries for many, many years without problems because I do my research, find good quality cables, and make sure that I'm making a proper connection. So I'm gonna show you how to get this thing in here. Now you have to remove the battery door on the bottom of the camera because for some weird reason, Sony didn't create a little flap to have the cable connection come out. And I think honestly they did that because they don't want you to power the camera off of a dummy battery as the first solution. They want you to power it off of the new USB-C, which you can use to power the camera off of. And I'll show you how to do that in a future video, but for today, I want to do this. And then I'm going to plug this into the side of the V-mount battery here where there's a D-tap connection. And I'll show you how this actually powers on. And what it's gonna do is put up a little battery warning. And this has been talked about in other videos, but I'll tell you what, it's really not a big deal. Essentially what it's gonna say is, hey, we can't verify the compatibility or safety of this battery. Like, are you sure you wanna use it? And I know that scares a lot of people because they're like, oh, I don't wanna fry my camera, but I've used it for a while now with this camera without any issues and it's working totally fine. So you just have to click okay on that warning when it pops up. Now that we have the power solution for this rig all set up, let's actually get a lens on here. And what I'm gonna be using is actually an adapter to go from Canon EF to E-mount. And this is a completely dead adapter with no electronics in it because most of the lenses that I use are fully manual. 
and most of them are Canon EF glass. So I will be using this Rokinon Cine DS lens and it works fine because again, everything I'm using is manual. You can of course get a nicer adapter with electronics built into it if you need autofocus and aperture control for your lens. The next thing we're gonna add to the lens is a Black Pro Mist from Tiffin and this is one quarter strength. You're probably already familiar with these but I like them because of course they bloom the highlights and soften the image a little bit, making it look a little bit more filmic and organic. Now it's got a top handle added to this rig. Now I'm using this one from Small Rig and it's my absolute favorite because it is just so small and low profile. Next, we're gonna add this monitor mount also from Small Rig that has an airy locating pin on it. And right on the front of our top handle, there are airy locating pins. So I will go ahead and just hand screw this into place. Now we can add a monitor to the top of this and you can use any monitor that you want, but I'm specifically using the Atomos Ninja V because with it and the A7S III combined, you can get ProRes RAW, which is freaking awesome. And we're gonna get into that in a whole other video. But yeah, that's what I'm using today with just a little SSD on the back a Sony NPF battery, and then I do have a cage on it. This one is from 8sin, and I just like that one. So we'll get this screwed into place here, and again, you just hand tighten it. Let's get our HDMI connected up to this. So I just have a short standard HDMI cable here. I try to find the shortest HDMI cables that I can so that I don't have a bunch of cables looping around and a bunch of extra slack. This is totally optional, but I'm also gonna add a sun hood to this because if you're doing a lot of shooting outside, it can be pretty difficult to see your monitor, even though this is a thousand nits brightness, that still has trouble combating the sun. So I'm gonna throw this on, and this actually came with the eight sin cage. I'm also gonna add a wooden side handle to this rig because I want another good spot to grip onto, especially when I'm doing that handheld work. This is a beautiful one from Small Rig. Honestly, I think it's the best one that they've ever made. And it also has the airy locating pins on it. So it's a really good, strong connection. And it just goes right here on the side of the cage. And what I like about this is it allows me to grab the whole rig and then still put a hand underneath it to pull focus, change my aperture, everything like that. Now, of course, the Sony a7S III does not have built-in variable NDs like you get on the Sony FX6 or FX9, so we gotta add one to the front here. And if you wanna keep it really small and low profile, you can simply use a circular variable ND filter and just screw it onto the front of the lens, but I wanted to use something a little bit more robust and professional, so I have this. This is from Polar Pro, and this is their beautiful base cam matte box and this uses a clamp mount to attach to the front of your lens they come in different millimeter thread sizes so this is a 77 millimeter which matches my lens and I'm gonna screw it right here which is actually onto the front of that black promise filter that I've already added And of course, this isn't just a variable ND filter. It has this matte box that you can clip on and off from the front to prevent those lens flares. And if you're still getting them, you can also add the flag that comes with the base camp to really cut out any unwanted sun flares or lens flares. Now, with the way that this is built out right now, I would definitely feel comfortable going out and shooting a professional client video with this setup but there are a couple accessories that you can add to this if you need them. So the first one I'm gonna show you is a wireless transmitter. Now this is one from Hollyland and it is the Cosmo 600. I've done a full review of it before on this channel, but this is really nice to have if you need to set up another monitor for a director or a remote focus polar or something like that in your little video village. So the way that I'm gonna attach this is with another small rig monitor mount all right, so there are actually two quarter 20 threads right here on the side of the cage, perfect for attaching this monitor mount. There are a couple reasons that I did it this way. One is I love having it on a hinge so that I can just 
tilt it right up into place. And then if I need to access any of the ports here on the side of the camera, I can easily do that and then tilt it right back and it stays. It's not gonna wiggle or move or anything like that. The other thing is that it has a really nice low connection point here so that it keeps the transmitter low instead of sticking up really high like off the monitor or even on this side handle here. Now let's get the cables plugged into this. The first one is a full size HDMI that I'm going to loop out of the Ninja V and then into the transmitter so that it will be received on another monitor somewhere on set. Now we gotta get power to it. So this D-tap cable with a Limo pin connection actually came with it. And then I still have an open D-tap port on the side of this battery. So I'm gonna plug it in there. Something that I love about the way this V-mount is attached is it's on that hinge. So you can drop this down at any point, see your settings on the back, or even flip the screen out here if you want to, and then close this back down so I can still see all my camera settings here on the side of the camera when I'm running the rig. Now, if you've seen some of my rig builds in the past, you know that I always do the shake test to just see how rigid and solid it is. So we'll kind of shake this thing around, flip it upside down, move it around, and you can see nothing's shaking or moving on this thing. And that's because it's just so rigid and using just such basically good parts that I chose so that things won't spin and move on you when you don't want them to on set because there's nothing more annoying than constantly adjusting your monitor or other accessories because they keep coming loose and falling over and that sort of thing. There are a couple of things that I left off of this rig build that I did actually have on my previous Sony a7S build out. The first one is that I didn't put a wireless follow focus on this one. And that's mainly because when I'm using this sort of handheld rig or rig on a tripod or a slider, I'm pretty much pulling focus just by putting my hand underneath right here and I find that that works really well. But of course you could add a wireless follow focus to this system, especially if you're gonna be having someone pulling focus for you remotely. Now in order to do that, you are going to need to add 15 millimeter rods, which I didn't add to this one either, like I have done in my previous rig build outs. And that's for a couple reasons. One, I wanted to keep this a little bit more light and compact. The other one is that I didn't need the rails because my matte box I'm using isn't using 15 millimeter rods anymore. It's just clamped onto the front of the lens. However, if you do want to attach these, you can put them into this 15 millimeter base plate down here, but you just need the little threadings that go into this side and then into this side here to actually extend them out. Another thing you'll notice is that I don't have a way to capture clean audio with this rig. So if you want to throw a shotgun mic on, you can put it on this cold shoe mount right here on the grip, or you can throw a lavalier mic on, whatever it is that you want, and then get this all plugged in to give you nice clean audio. Another thing you can do is if you don't want to power the Ninja V off of an NPF battery, you can actually use this little adapter that comes with it and then use a D-tap splitter to give you more D-tap ports. So I can plug this into the side of the battery here and then pretty much just Velcro this onto the battery itself and get everything plugged in to also power the monitor. I put links to all the parts I used to build this out down in the description below, so definitely check those out. And guys, if you want to see more videos like this, Hit subscribe right now because I have a ton more videos coming out on rigging, shooting, editing, lighting, everything like that, and you don't want to miss it. All right, I'll see you in the next video.